Good afternoon. Welcome to Chemistry. So ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be working on lesson 19, properties of acids and bases, and we're going to look at the concentration of hydrogen as it relates to pH. Before we jump into lesson 19, I want us to step back to last class and review the material that you learned that day. So while I'm getting organized with the Elmo, could you please take out your wobbly thumbs books, go to the back pages, set up a heading, pop quiz number two, acids and bases. At the start of class, we elicit the students' prior knowledge using a thing which I call a wobbly thumbs discussion. When I started teaching, I found most students were quite lethargic when they came to the end of the day, or perhaps first thing in the morning, or if it was just after lunch. Basically, they have a tendency to be lethargic at certain times of the year. So the 113 wobbly thumbs discussion, a student comes and reads an engage prompt. The prompts are always written so that it says, what do you think? And I teach students that in this room, if it asks you, what do you think, there are only correct answers because the question asked you, what's in your head? Share. In chemistry, you can be thinking something that is not mainstream, but you could have the right answer. So that's why we call them theories. We have a hypothesis, we test them if you can get evidence, and you can sometimes have two competing theories which both make sense, and nobody knows which one is the right one to go for. So with wobbly thumbs, you have a non-threatening environment to share what you think might be the answer. So whether you're a high-flying student or a student who is really working very hard to understand things, you can say your idea. So the key vocabulary from last class was this word, dissociation. So who can recap for us in a very short sentence what it means to dissociate? Please show me your hands. I see one hand. I see two hands. Excellent. Kiera, please go ahead. Okay, so in chemistry, dissociation means when molecules break apart mm -hmm. to increase the hydrogen con concentration. Excellent. Thank you very much. Does anybody have anything they want to add to that description? Okay, I want you to think about when the molecule or when the compound dissociates, what is it breaking into? Please show me your hands. Excellent. Zaina, go ahead. Anions and anions. Absolutely. Well done. Can you give us an example of a cation and an anion, please? Um, How do you know it's a cation? A cation has a little plus sign at mm -hmm. the side, which is hydrogen. Yes, hydrogen, good example. And an anion has a negative sign next to it. Chlorine. Chloride, yes, perfect example. Thank you very much, Zaina. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've recapped what dissociation means, and we were discussing about strong acids and strong bases and weak acids and weak bases. So we're going to move forwards. Oop, where's he gone? There he is. We're going to move forwards now to the engage. So thinking back to the engage that we did last class, we had four clear colorless solutions. You predicted which ones would conduct electricity, and then we tested it. So who remembers which of these conducted, and do you remember why they conducted? Please show me your hands. Thank you. Go ahead, Kiera. Um, I believe it was, I think it was hydrochloric acid, and uh -huh. I think that it was because that substance was the most acidic. Super. Okay. Okay. And what did hydrochloric acid do when it's, when it's put in the water and stirred around? What does it do? Think back to that key vocabulary we've just looked at. Show me your hands. Thank you, Miguel. What does, what does the hydrochloric acid do when we dissolve it in water and stir it up? The hydrochloric acid, acid disassociates into hydrogen and chlorine ions. 
Perfect, thank you so much. So when it does that, it is able to conduct electricity. So you remember that this is dissociating to H+. plus. Do you see anything else that dissociated to make H+, plus and something else? Thank you, Andrew. Uh, sodium chloride, when it uh, dissociates, it splits into Na, Na, and Cl. Mm -hmm. And what's special about sodium? It's a metal. It is. Okay, and why is it important when we're talking about electricity and metals? Uh, they conduct. Lovely. Thank you, sir. Okay, now we've looked at hydrochloric acid, making the H+. Plus, and we looked at sodium chloride, which made cations and anions, so the electricity could zip through. Do you see anything else? I know there was three solutions that did conduct electricity. Which was the third one? Thank you, Jenna. Go ahead. Um, acidic acid. Uh huh. Um, and because um, acidic, um, if it's an acid, then it conducts electricity. Well done. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So I think that's enough recap. I think you are ready for your pop quiz. Which of these substances do you expect will conduct electricity? Hydrocyanic acid, magnesium hydroxide, or methanol? And I just before we move on, I want you to look at this. We know that if it's an acid, it's dissociating to make H+. Does anybody remember what this little polyatomic ion is? I see one hand. I see two hands. Nakia, please tell us. Cyanide. Well done. So we've got a cyanide polyatomic anion there. OK, you have just two minutes to write your best answer. We're grading in smileys today. At the start of class today, we did a pop quiz, which they should have been able to do wonderfully if they had done their homework and done their reading. And we graded in smiley faces. If you didn't make a significant number of smiley faces, in other words, if you didn't actually make 75%, I'm encouraging you to come to tutoring. We don't call it tutoring. We call it chemistry investment club. And the key is you're investing in your future. And we go over the tricky parts. And it's absolutely fine to bring your homework with you and say, hey, I was doing this, but I don't understand. And I can't get the right answer. Everything is permitted in chemistry lunch club when it comes to the homeworks. So the reason we're grading in smiley faces is because I put this in the grade book, but it's a non-calculated grade. The children are going to be taking responsibility for their learning. And if we do a pop quiz that they can score zero out of two and forget about it, that's a problem. Now, because this is a new topic, I don't want to penalize them in the grade book. It should be something that the child can say, gee, I did that reading, I did that homework, but I didn't understand. What can I do to fix that? So to create accountability, so there's a track record, I'm putting pop quizzes in the grade book with the kind of the zero percent thing on on course. So the child can see that they made 50 percent. They were invited to attend tutoring. And the option is if you prefer to not attend tutoring, it's your responsibility to go back and find alternative ways to understand the material. So if you could please finish your sentence and switch pens to your grading pen. Okay, please show me your pens to show you're ready to grade. I see five pens. I see everyone's pens. Thank you, that's great. Okay, so we were talking about dissociation. So, who has some thoughts on this? Please show me your hands. Okay, Miss Catherine, please tell us, what do you think is gonna make the things conduct electricity? Um, well, I think it's because it's an acid and acids conduct electricity. Super, okay, so easy peasy question then, follow on. Tell us, which one are you predicting will definitely conduct electricity out of these three? Um, hydrocyanic acid. I agree with you. Who agrees with Catherine? Okay, because remember, I'm not always right, so you have to question that. Okay, good. So next thing, so acids conduct electricity. What else do we know for sure does conduct electricity? Show me your hands. I see lots of hands. 
Okay, I'm going to go to the back there, Miss Astrid. Um, metal also conducts electricity. Okay, so which do you think now is going to conduct electricity here? Uh, magnesium hydroxide. Super, thank you very much. Okay, so let's just recap there. We've got magnesium hydroxide here and there's just one little disclaimer that they should have in there in my opinion. Okay, is there any time that magnesium hydroxide, an ionic compound, will not conduct electricity? Think back. Think back to when we did our conductivity of metals lab. Metals do conduct electricity. Pure metals. But what's the special thing about ionic compounds? Mr. Andrew, go ahead. Um, they'll only connect, conduct electricity when they're dissolved in a, a aqueous. Bingo. Thank you, sir. So really, it should say here, it should say aqueous, shouldn't it? Mm-hmm. So if you didn't get magnesium hydroxide because you were thinking about the solid state, okay, fair enough. Now, methanol. As I was walking around checking your books, you're kind of going, eh, you're not so sure. So last class, when we looked at sugar, we decided that what probably the reason why sugar doesn't conduct is because it stays stuck together in its molecule. Who remembers the shape of a sugar molecule? Miss Kennedy. So what's the shape of a sugar molecule? Yeah, that, that shape. What's that? A circle, yeah, we call it a ring shape. So in a sugar molecule that's like, like a, a roundy ring with all the carbons, the electrons are so busy bonding that they don't have time to zip off and conduct electricity for us. So here we've got something that we're not sure about. I could see there was a lot of puzzled faces going on there. What do you know it is by the name? Methanol. I see one hand, I see two hands. I see three hands. Miss Sierra, tell us what you think by the word all at the end. Uh, a solid? It could be a solid. If, if we dehydrated it, it could be. Let's assume this is a clear colorless liquid and the clue is that it rhymes with its character. So do you remember at the back we've got the carboxyls, we've got the esters, we've got the amines. What's the functional group that ends in all? You don't know? You don't remember? I know you do remember, but it's okay. You've got brain freeze right now. Let's phone a friend. Who you want to phone? Nakia. Nakia. Okay, Nakia, we're phoning you. Thank you so much. So I know that we didn't do functional groups for a long time, so I was expecting this one to throw you a little bit. We will go back and review alcohols and all the other functional groups starting next week. Okay, so grading. We're grading in smileys. If you predicted one or two of these correctly, you can have a half smiley face. If you predicted all three of them correctly, you get a whole smiley face. Now, explaining. You have to be able to explain so a ninth grader who didn't do chemistry yet does understand. If you think your explanation is awesome and it makes total sense to you, give yourself a whole smiley. So one smiley for identifying, one smiley for explaining. Okay, now, remember those smileys are important because when you review, as you go through your book, anything with a big giant smiley face you don't have to spend so much time. When you go through your book and you see a straight face or a frowny face, it's your signal to stop here and re-review that lesson. Okay? So add up your smileys, put them in a circle, and please put the smiley face that best describes how you're feeling about acids and bases and dissociation of molecules and compounds. Okay, so at this stage, we're getting ready to move into the main part of the lesson. So let's turn on the lights and move him. 
and let's take a look and see what are we going to be doing for our lesson 19. Okay, so we'll start off with our wobbly thumbs discussion. And Jenna has volunteered to run wobbly thumbs for us today. And we're going to be looking at our essential question, which is, how is pH related to the acid or base concentration of a solution? After the discussion, we're going to have an exploration. So part explore and part lab. You can see here we're working in lab groups of three or four people. And it is imperative that you wear goggles for part two when you're doing the testing. Now, what do I mean by the word imperative? Please show me your hands. Thank you, Nicole. It's important. Yes, how important? Really important. OK, after that, we'll have our explain and elaborate. Please make sure that you're taking notes someplace where you're going to be able to find them. So if you want to take notes on a piece of paper that you've already got the heading up there, that would be great. Alternatively, your Lesson 19 sheet, you can turn it sideways and write in the margin. Remember that tonight, to extend your learning from today and make sure that you've got all the concepts under hand, make sure you read your Lesson 19. Okay, we went over homework for this week, last class. I won't go into it in detail. I'm just remind you again, we have the pop quiz next week on balancing equations as the review. And this is the lesson 19 from that homework you wrote down last class, 17, 18, 19. So, hmm, I know what I meant to say to you. There's a very funny symbol in the heading of today's lesson. This chap. Okay, so these square brackets are used by chemists. We're very fond of making things short. And when you see this symbol with the square brackets, it means the concentration of blank, whatever's inside the square bracket. So concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. Go, uh-huh, so I know you understand. OK, good. All right. So there's a key vocabulary up here. And you know what? I think it's important to review this concept before we do the engage, and Jenna, then it's your turn, okay? So you remember from a long, long time ago that MOL is short for mole, and a mole is an Avogadro's number of something, okay? So we can have an Avogadro's number of elephants, an Avogadro's number of apples, an Avogadro's number of oxygen atoms. How many is an Avogadro's number of something. I see one hand. I see two hands. I see three hands. I'd love to see more hands. Remember, we've got ask me or don't ask me. And if you don't put your hand up, it means I need to explain the question or repeat the question a different way. OK, I'm going to ask Keishana. Wow, could you say that louder, please? I don't think the people at the far side heard you. Um, 62 sextillion. Mm, do you mean 62 sextillion or do you mean 600? Oh, 602. That's what I thought. That's what you said the first time. Yeah. yeah. So 602 sextillion. Okay, and does anybody remember how I can write this? instead of saying sextillion or writing the lots and lots and lots and lots of zeros? How do I write it in the scientific notation? Ms. Nakia, please go ahead. I think it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Did you say 23rd? Yes. Excellent choice. OK. So why is that important? Why are we reviewing that little part? It's because when we're looking at those solutions, M is a chemist symbol for molarity. In other words, the concentration. So when you see, when you see 0 0.010 molar hydrochloric acid, you know that 
inside one liter of solution, you have got this much hydrochloric acid, okay? And we use the molar mass to figure out how much to add. Okay, so now it's time for us to do our engage. And Jenna, are you ready? Yes? Let's switch up the lights for you. Oh, hang on, I got one reminder. First reminder is turn on the overhead again. You know, you know that pop quiz that you just did? Go, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so I just want to remind you that Chemistry Investment Club is meeting every A day at 11 a.m. If you did not make a smiley grade of 1.5 or greater, would you please, please consider attending the one that we're going to run on Friday? Okay, not compulsory, but anybody who attends, they generally find it very helpful. And I wanted to say this to you. If you did make a 1.5 or greater, congratulations, because this is a new topic to you, and I know we haven't done a lot of recap on it. Oh, he's gone. So there we are, lesson 19, and our essential question. Jenna, do you want to read the essential question, and then I'll move on and give you the, the warm-up question. Okay. Um how is pH related to the acid or base concentration of a solution? Pure water has an H plus concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh power molarity and an OH negative of 1.0 times 10 to the neg negative seven power molarity. What does this mean? Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you have 15 seconds to think about this. Okay, now please could you share your thoughts with your elbow partners? You have 45 seconds. Um, um, well, maybe the H positive and H negative will cancel out since they're the same, they have the same molarity. I read ahead um, and I remember it said something about like they had to be balanced to like negative 14, mm -hmm. like the scientific notation. So I don't know. I think that's like the scientific notation part that might like cancel. Yeah, like you said, like cancel out, mm -hmm. and then it'll be like balanced, I guess. Yeah. So, I think that's what it is. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. It is time to commit your thoughts to paper. Please remember to write in full sentences and to restate the question within your answers. You have three minutes. Um, pure water has an H plus concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th power molarity and an OH negative of 1 to the uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th power molarity. What does this mean? Show me your hands, please. The student leader will come to the front of the class and they will respectfully ask students to volunteer to speak. And I have a system where you may not not put your hand up. Okay, so you, if, you want, if you would like to be asked to volunteer, you raise your right hand, and I teach people, this is, this is like this hand, and I, I model for them each day. So if you would like to be called on, please raise your right hand. This is your ask me hand. If you really don't feel like talking today, 
you're a bit tired, your throat hurts. In those circumstances, it's perfectly fine to say, I'm participating, but please don't ask me. On the other hand, if you don't raise your hand, that is signaling that either A, you're still thinking and trying to decide which hand to put up, or B, you're confused and puzzled and you'd like the question to be repeated in a different way. So that means that every child knows they're going to need to put their hand up. There is no point in spacing out, going to sleep. And the thing is, if you don't have your hand up, you're going to be asked in a very concerned voice, would you like me to repeat the question or would you prefer me to say it in a different way? So the spotlight will be focused on you, so you might as well decide pretty fast, is it ask me or don't ask me? And just because you raise your don't ask me hand, if that's kind of the only hand you ever raise, because let's say maybe you have a pain in your right shoulder, you know, it wouldn't be fair to penalize you. You know, so if every class you're always raising your left hand, don't worry, we will include you in the questioning and you will be invited. So the best thing for students is the second they've got something to contribute, throw up the hand, because the day that you really don't know it, you can have a get out of jail free card. That one. All right, good. Hands, please. Thank you. Kira. Um, I just want to say that, yeah, I concur with Andrew because I kind of read ahead. And I read, it, was, it said something about how the whole, the balance of the H concentration and the OH concentration has to add up to negative 14, um, 10 to the negative 14th molarity. So I think that, yeah, the negative 7 and negative 7, they will, like, add up to negative 14, and then it'll be balanced. Show me your thumbs, please. Thank you. And one more person. Show me your hands, please. Does anyone concur? Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. So we've just looked at the Engage where it was explaining that pure water has H plus ions and it also has OH negative ions. And I thought it would be a good idea for us to stop and think for a moment and let you figure out why have we got those ions going on. So this is a process called the auto-ionization of water. It doesn't happen very much. And if you look at that concentration, look, go look back at the concentration again, it says H plus concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. Now, if each one of those H pluses was a dollar, and somebody said that they would give you 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 dollars, would you be very excited? No. no. Why not? It's not even a penny. It's tiny. So that's a really, really small amount. Go, uh-huh, so I know you're understanding. Uh-huh, okay, so it does happen, but it doesn't happen very often, okay? It's a bit like true love. So you know that if you were dating someone, you might see somebody really cute the other side of the room, but you know you're in a committed relationship, so that's no good. Go, uh-huh. So it's just like that for those water molecules. You'll remember that you have got these little dipoles Okay, with the polarity in the water molecule, you've got your delta positive and your delta negative, and you know that those hydrogens are kind of attracted to the oxygen and vice versa, don't you? Yeah. But you see, they're kind of all bonded. They're a bit busy being bonded. But just in the same way that for you to start a new relationship with somebody, you have to interface with them. You guys, you can use Facebook, you can use texting. What do those poor old molecules have to use? Real-time communication. Yeah, they've got to be face-to-face -face in the same space and they have to bump together in the correct orientation. It's like if you were dating somebody and you went off to a party with your partner and you met that cute person, it's no good. You're occupied, aren't you? Yeah, but if you were single again, then it would be fine for you to be dating the other person. So it's kind of like this a little bit. We have here two water molecules in perfect orientation. You can see here it's lined up, absolutely gorgeous. And what happens is you know that when there's any kind of trouble going on, who's involved? Bad boy hydrogen. Bad boy hydrogen. And here it is. You can see that as the water molecules pass each other, this little hydrogen, the attraction was too strong, couldn't resist. 
And we've ended up with this very strange species. And we call it a hydronium ion. Better write in there, ion. And a hydroxyl ion. So this is our very strange, funky thing. And we put a plus sign to show we've added the proton. And you'll remember from last class, we were reading about the, the proton theories of our Aeneas. So we write him like this. And here, here's our hydroxyl ion. Now, this is the pure chemistry way of writing it. But sometimes when you talk to people who are just starting in chemistry, they're not so comfortable with this. OK. For a start, it's breaking at least one rule. Can anybody think of a rule that this molecule is breaking right now? Show me your hands. I find that students pay attention when you can relate something directly to their lives. And when we're talking about molecules, they're very abstract things. They're really tiny. We can't see them. So I personify. And we talk about positive cations being very happy and running to the head of the lunch line. So when you write an ionic compound, you put the positive happy thing at the front. Sometimes you have issues with atoms not behaving in the classic, this is how it happens way. And as the year progressed, students have found that oftentimes it's hydrogen who's not behaving the way you'd expect it. For example, hydrogen can be H plus, it can like, let go of its electron, or it can be H negative. It can steal an electron from somebody else. And that's very uncommon in the world of atoms. So one day, I would said something about, oh, that bad boy hydrogen. And the students latched onto that. So now I make analogies, for example, for dating. We had a dating analogy today when we were doing the different types of reactions. We were talking about single exchange and double exchange reactions. And I was saying how it was like Annie and Billy, who were an ionic compound, went on a date with, by themselves. And on the way, they met Claudia sitting there who was crying because she was lonely and she didn't have a date. And they said, hey, come and go bowling with us. So unfortunately, some chemistry happened. And by the end of the evening, they'd switched partners. And now it was. Annie who is single. So when you relate it to their lives and you personify the atoms and give them human qualities, it's maybe not something that you do in a university classical chemistry course, but it engages the students. And they can also identify the concepts, but you know, they can identify with what's going on for those atoms. And it, it stays in their head. OK, Miss Dana, go ahead. Which rule is it breaking? The Hulk rule. Mm -hmm. And what's that in connection with? H stands for hydrogen, and it can bond once. O stands for oxygen, and it can only bond twice. N stands for nitrogen, and it can bond three times. Mm -hmm. C stands for carbon, and it can bond four times. Super. Thank you so much. Well, well remembered. So what's going on here? Why is it breaking the rule? What's the problem? Because hydrogen is only bonding once. Thank you, Miguel. What's the problem here? That oxygen is bonding three times even though it can only bond twice. Exactly. So we know there's trouble when there's hydrogens going around. So because a lot of people would be very uncomfortable with this, when chemists are writing it, we write it a special way so that everybody else is comfortable. Okay? I want you to remember that this is the real thing. It's called a hydronium ion. But so that if you're talking to somebody in ninth grade or a biology person, okay? <laughs> OK, you have to write it like this. So when you see H plus inside square brackets, we're talking about the, actually talking about the concentration of hydronium ions. But what they're saying is, look, let's ignore the actual water molecule. Let's just say this is bad boy hydrogen. OK? Because that's much easier for most people to remember. They think of one water molecule splitting in pieces. OK, but you remember it doesn't happen quite like that, OK, because you're real chemists. Nod your head and go, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Good. OK, so when you take these two molecules and you split them up, you've got one hydronium ion, you've got one hydroxyl ion, what ratio is this? What ratio have you got for your products? I'll give you a clue. There's nothing written in front of the molecules. Thank you, Jenna. A one-to-one -one ratio. Absolutely. So if I tell you I've got a hydrogen concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, 
What does that mean that I've got to have as my concentration for hydroxyl? Mm-hmm. Oops. Ugh. Oh, getting old. Who put that there? So you can see now. Now do you understand where these figures are coming from? Yeah? Excellent. Okay, guess what? We're ready to start class. Are you ready? Okay. So could you please now get your lesson 19 sheets? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last class you worked and you looked at different kinds of acid-base solutions. I was just wondering, does anybody recall what the blank spaces in those little boxes means? Nicole, tell us. What are the blank, what's the blank space? Water. Why did we have a blank space for water? Remember, it's a chemist who drew it. I see two hands, I see three hands. I see four hands, I see five hands. Miss Nikia, go ahead. Because there are a lot of water molecules and chemists are too lazy to draw them all. <laughs> yes, spot on, well done. Okay, there is, in this little square, we actually have enough space for 140,000 water molecules. So it really is not unreasonable to go, it's okay, you don't have to draw all of them. Okay, it would take too long. So, could you please pick up your Lesson 19 sheet? I'll get mine too. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is you're going to work in your small groups and you're going to cluster around a table while I get the lab ready. Okay. And I'll give you back the cards and I'll give you the traffic light cards so if you need me you can wave red to me. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to get into small groups of three or four people and could I ask you to avoid using the back tables so please do not use the back row and please do not use the front row of these two places okay but other than that you can use the rest of the room okay so could you organize yourselves now you need to take your lesson 19 sheet with you and also your hydrogen concentration handout and your goggles Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as you're settled, could you orient your bodies so that you can see the overhead projector again? Okay. Okay. The cards. Wait, is it on here or? I need to use the cards. Not cards. Okay, could I please have a volunteer to read out our aims and objectives for this activity, please? Somebody with a good, strong voice. Yeah, you're going to work again, Kiera. Thank you. After this lesson, including your, reading at, including your reading and practice work at home, you will be able to explain the mathematical relationship between the H plus and OH negative concentrations in a solution, define pH, and explain the relationship between H concentration and pH Determine the H plus concentration of a solution between the OH and vice versa. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Okay, so now I've given you out your solution cards again. Adi, could you read us out the instructions for part one, please? Part one. Mm -hmm. Examine the handout H plus concentration, OH negative concentration, and pH. List at least five patterns you notice. Okay, now I'm going to work with you for this first little piece. And then as soon as you've got the idea of it, you can all get going. Okay. Now I notice some of you are starting putting your safety goggles on right now. That will be important, but we don't need to use them right now this minute. Okay, so just keep them handy. That's for part two. When you finish part two, you're going to be able to move Sorry, when you're finished part one, you're going to be able to move straight into the labs. And I'm going to ask that these three groups, you work at the front of the room. Okay? 
So one, two, three, you're going to be at the front of the room. And one, two, three, are you a group of two? Okay. All right. So group, you guys, you work at the back of the room. There'll be three stations set up. And as you rotate, would you make sure you go clockwise, please? Okay. And let's get back here. Yeah, if we have a spill, you may use any sink to wash off your hands. Okay. If you find that something disastrous happens, it shouldn't because you're good kids, but if something disastrous happens, we have the safety shower and the eye wash at the back of the room. Don't be frightened to use them if you need them. Okay. I want to talk about this now because if we don't talk about this now, you guys are going to jump into the lab and I won't have spoken to you. There is a new procedure for pH paper. Can you make sure that with you, you do have your lab procedure? We won't go through and read it now. You can read it in your groups when the time comes. So make sure you've read the pH procedure. Make sure that you've read the procedure for the vernier probes. Do you promise? Yes. OK, good. That's fine. In that case, let's get back to our solution cards. So I've got a few solutions going on up on the board. Have, can you spread out your cards? Everybody has a pack of cards. Okay, so once you've got those organized, the next thing is to get your hand out for concentration and put it on top. Okay? Cover up the cards. Mm -hmm. Cover up the cards so you can't see them. Okay, good. Now, I'm not being funny. I just want to make sure that you understand that for part one, you don't use the cards. Okay? Part one, just focus on the handout. Go have a look at the table and see the information that you can find from this. Okay, when you've done that, could you then go back to the yellow card? So let's pretend we've done part one. Uncover your cards, reveal your cards. Okay, and it's asking you, it's asking you to arrange them in order of decreasing H plus concentration. And I just wanted to visit that word before I let you to your own devices. OK, what's the opposite of decreasing? Increasing. increasing. OK, so what does increasing mean? Getting greater. So what does decreasing have to mean? Getting lower. OK, so if you could pick any card out of all those cards, which one would have the most H plus? Water. You think, okay, now just, just have a little Think. We were looking at the pH scale the past two classes. Let me ask you that question again. Bear in mind, what does the pH scale measure? Oh, H. How much H? How much hydrogen? Let me ask you that question again. Which? So where? Where is somebody? I heard the word water. Where is water coming in the pH scale? At the Seven. center. Whereabouts is that in the pH in the scale? Middle. Smack in the middle. Oh, so so clearly it can't be water, even though water is an obvious choice because it's full of H's and O's all tied together. Hydrochloric acid. Excellent. But you've got three kinds of hydrochloric acid. Which one? The first three. This one. Point ten. Point zero ten. Why do you think? Yeah. Why do you think? You're, you're telling me. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I'm asking you to justify. Because it has a very low pH. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, I hear a key word. Can we go over to this group, please? Could you say that louder? It has the most moles. Exactly. It's got the most stuff dissolved in just one litre of water. OK, ladies and gents, there is not a lot of time in our classes. Please look at the clock. Please be sure that in just five minutes, you move yourselves on to looking at part two, which is predicting the pH. See this cute handout, the one you put in your name on the top? This is what you need to be using when you are looking at part two. OK? 
okay? So use the handout and the cards for part two. Okay, on your marks. Oh, are there any questions? No. If you need me, flag red. Okay? Does everybody have a set of traffic light cards? No. No? Oh, I'll bring you traffic light cards. Set your traffic, if you have them, set your traffic light cards how you're feeling so I know where I need to, to stop by. Okay, on your marks, get set, you may go. There's also like oh, the they have ten to the negative seven. Yeah. Yeah, because they add, they have to add up to negative fourteen. So negative seven, negative seven. Okay, so for our first group, oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Hydrochloric acid moves from being neutral to acidic, and then the NaOH moves from being neutral to base. Yeah. So that can be two and three. NaOH, so mole values. So the greater the mole, the greater concentration, whether it's like acid or base. So, yeah. It moves from a neutral to basic. You all see that the pH yeah. is from 7 to okay. 14, and this one moves from neutral to acid. Yeah. Okay. So and then also, as you go down, these get smaller because the more negative, the smaller it gets. So as it goes from acid to base. I put students in groups every class. And the reason for that is because that is mirroring what goes on in real science. No scientist is working independently. So I want my students to be used to sharing scientific thoughts to each other. Also, research shows that we retain 90% of what we teach. So if you have a small group of mixed ability students, then someone who's strong in a certain area can explain to somebody who maybe isn't quite grasping it. And the fact that that the person who's strong has explained the concept means that they have actually made it even stronger inside their head. We'll just do the chart. Because there is no cation or anion, you're only looking at 10 point, 1 times 10 to the negative 7 hydrogens and 1 times 10 to the negative 7 hydroxyls. So that's neutral because you're only looking at the cations and anions that balance each other out in the water for this chap. So it's just with water? Yeah, it's the same. It's, it, we, we're, we, predicted, we predicted last class that these kind of solutions would be wondering. neutral. I kept so, wondering what the heck was wrong with that. Oh. <laughs> that was, was what well, see, now, Zaina, whenever in chemistry, whenever you decide that there's got to be a problem and you're not understanding it, it's usually because other people don't have the theory or the answer is, is so basic that you think to yourself, well, it can't be that. That's too obvious. You know you're totally correct. You're, on, you're not even looking at these, these, here we go, look, he's methanol, he's that alcohol again. Not going to dissociate, all right? Now, so that's the hydrogen source that we've got H pluses going on. And who can, who can find, ah, oh, now. Now, if you'd, if you'd come to lunch club, we'd have got, we went over the reading for this one, where you can see, do you see this OH negative? Okay, can, can we put it up? 
put it down so that they can't be zoomed in. Okay, you've got the OH negative. Is this so when you, when you go back and do the reading for lesson 18 this weekend, you're going to read about how Mr. Um, Bronson and Lowry, they said, well, actually, this ammonia guy, he acts as a base, even though he doesn't have any hydroxyl in him. Okay, so where's the sort of hydroxyl? It's not as a base because it's got OH negative. This chap doesn't. But of course you need to practice as an aqueous solution. So what are you going to pull out of the aqueous solution? Of course. The first one's going to be too little. Yeah. See, look, there we go. Just the same as we did earlier after the engage. One water molecule sticks past, and bad boy hydrogen goes and sticks onto the ammonia molecule, leaving behind. They got these two switches. So because you see, look, that one's third. That one's third. No, we had it fourth. If you're going to increase the hydroxyl concentration, you're making it more basic. It's basic. Try and separate them first into your acids, neutrals, and bases. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way to start, and then and then go through it and see which is. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a key point here. You know you've got all these acetic acids and formic acids and hydrochloric acids. Oh. Okay, see the one that says acid, acid, acid. See. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. Remember that each of these little boxes are the same quantity of water. Mm -hmm. So if H plus is the cation, and I probably shouldn't tell you this because they'll scream at me for helping you cheat, right? All you've got to do is some counting. Go count how many little grey dots that say H plus. So the more H plus, the more acid. Okay? Yes, sir. Oh! We kind of have an idea mm -hmm. of the chart, but then, okay, so we know water is going to be in the middle. Yeah. And, and where did you put all the acids? On this side. That's what I thought. It ah. wouldn't need to be the more, but, but they have now, lower H concentration. Right. Don't forget now, this, this, is, this is part of your exploration. You're predicting, you're trying to say, okay, well, if it's an acid, it's going to have a pH of, what do we know for sure? What's the range for sure? Lower than seven. Yeah, lower lower than, seven. than seven. Okay, so maybe all you can write is lower than seven. What about if you know for sure it's a base? Higher than seven. Okay. And what about the ones that you're not sure if it's an acid or a base? What could you do for that? This is your data table. Nobody's going to come along and grade it. I guess put it in, yeah, the middle. in the middle. Okay, do that. And could you make a little note by it, put a little star by it and say, not sure about this one? Mm -hmm. Now, what I will say to you is think back to the engage. We had one solution in the engage that we said wouldn't conduct electricity. We said if it had a metal cation, it does conduct. If it has hydrogen cation, it does conduct. Okay, but, or if it has the OH negative, we know there's electrons zipping around. There was one classification of molecule. Last week we said that sugars weren't conducting electricity. What was, what was the type of molecule today that we said didn't conduct electricity? Was it alcohol? It was alcohol. Do you see any alcohols here? Aha! So what do you predict now? Is he going to conduct electricity if he's an alcohol? No. No. So if he doesn't conduct electricity, what does that mean his pH has to be? Because he's seven. Um, Maybe neutral. Okay, why do you think maybe neutral? Uh, because it has a balanced concentration of H and OH. He's not dissociating, he's not adding hydrogen, he's not making hydroxyl come out of the water. Okay, if he's not dissociating, there is no electricity going to happen. Okay, and if there's no electricity going on, if it's in pure water, theoretically if it's in pure water, you should have a pH of? Seven. Seven. Go for it. I see a red thing. You shouldn't stop work just because you're stuck. So I teach students that you need to keep your traffic light card current. When you're working in a small group, you have one set of cards. So that's a red card for, please, Mrs. Austin, stop and help us. A yellow card for, we think we've got it, but if you've got time, do check in. And green for, we're busy, we're doing our thing, keep going. That you know for definite is an acid, what should the pH be for that? Below seven. Below seven. Okay, so give, give me an example of an acidic pH. Four. Four, okay. So are there any things here that you know for sure are going to be less than seven? Nothing. We think it's all these. Okay. These are bases. 
Okay, so we're good with those ones. What do you know for sure are going to be bases because they're adding hydroxyl? And you can see on the cards that they're adding hydroxyl. Um, yeah, that one. That one? Okay, and? Sorry. That one? And? Any more OHs going on there? Now, I'm, I'm specific, I'm sorry, I wasn't specific enough. I'm looking for a hydroxyl iron, so I'm looking for OH negative. It's only those two. You sure? Aha. Uh -huh. And that one. And that one. Okay. So what can you say for definite about these three, if they're bases? What their pH got to be? Above seven. Above seven. Give me an example of a pH above seven, please. Nine. Nine. Super. Okay, so you can pick anything you like between those ones. Right? Or if you just wanted, you could say simply greater than. If you're totally stuck, don't be totally stuck. Put greater than seven. Okay? So we're here looking at water, which you said was seven. We're looking at those ones. Okay, I seem to remember somebody doing something with sodium chloride a long time ago. You may like to check your notes or you may like to take a guess. But let's look at this methanol. They're alcohols. They're alcohols. What do you know about alcohols? They don't conduct electricity. Uh huh. Which means if they're not conducting electricity, what are they not doing? Um, they're not acidic. Mm. They're not acidic. So, we know that when there's cations going on, mm -hmm. okay, and anions, we know they do conduct electricity. If there is no H plus, and do you see any hydroxyl ion in there? No. Do you see any dissociation going on? No. Okay, so we said the alcohols are not acids, obviously, because it's a different configuration. But just like the sugar molecule from last time, the electrons are too busy and going round and round in a circle bonding. These guys do not dissociate. So you do have H plus in here. You do have OH negative in here. Why, why can I say that with definite certainty, even though this does not dissociate? What kind of a solution is it? It's, a, it's an aqueous solution. But you've got the hydrogens and the hydroxyls, theoretically, in perfect balance. So what should the pH be for these? Seven. Okay. So let's, I'm quickly going to finish tidying up and getting your lab organized so you can start testing your theories. Would you please go back and group these into bases, group them into acids, group them into what you think could be neutrals, and see if you can actually even count. Like, go count how many hydrogen balls. Remember that each one of these squares, each one of these squares is telling you, you know, this is how much hydrogen is in this much water. So, the pH scale is the measure of what? How much acid you've got. So the one with the most little H plus balls is the one that's got the most acid. Okay, are we turning that to green? Yes. Have you done the table? Have you predicted the pH? Okay, baby, if you could just give me, can you? Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> smiley, smiley faces on your hands. Okay, here's the deal. Because I was a little bit nervous, I think I've overrun with the talking. Okay. PH paper test procedure. Tear off approximately five centimeters of paper and clip to the end of a clothespin. Okay. That's too much. Oh, if you try to clip. Not too much. Yeah, right there. Okay. And clip it to this. We'll take turns like dipping it to test the vegetables. Um, we're going to need more of that. Dip less than half of the paper strip into the solution and wash your fingers. I'm doing this one for you. Yeah. Remove the paper and promptly compare with the color chart to determine the corresponding pH. Alright, it's one. One two. Yeah, it's like one, two, two. One to two. I think it's one or two. No, it's two. It's two. It's two. Okay, two. So we're alone. Yeah, two to three. Alright. Okay. Um put wait a minute. Yeah, put that in the white waste cup. Oh wait, this one's already done. Hold on. 
So now we just repeat for every time. So today's lab, the students were making predictions about what they thought the pH of certain solutions would be. And there was some consternation and students were feeling that they were stuck and how did they know because the answers are not on the sheet. So they had the, a table of concentrations and you had to really examine this table and look at the data and you needed to be extrapolating and honestly the students who got it started they worked from the known and went to the unknown the most successful group was a group who went hang on we don't know any of this stuff but we do know the water so they went down to the water and they were looking and they were saying okay yeah we have the concentration here that was what we did on the board at the start of class and on the table that they were working from, it was asking what's the decrease in concentration of hydrogen molarity from all these solution cards. And they were able to stick water in the middle. Hydrochloric acid, they gave them one little example. They knew, okay, if it's acid, it's got more hydrogen in it. But then it was like shades of gray. You know, where does which go? And at this stage, there is no way I'm gonna come along here and go check, 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 check. Because then you take all the fun out of everything. They're, I want them to train them to be scientists. You have your hypothesis, go test it. So that then is where the inquiry comes. Today the students were working with some basic, some ordinary you know, pH paper, which is where you dip the little piece of paper in the solution and then you match the color. But honestly, as a scientist, that's really irritating because you only get qualitative information like how green is the stick there's no number associated with it so we're very lucky that we have the vernier lab quests those little tiny electronic thingies so sure go ahead do the traditional route take your little piece of ph paper stick it in there it's going to be more precise than the cabbage juice but to to see shades of acidity and basicity, it's important for you to have the electronic thing so you can see that it's maybe definitely 6.1 rather than 6.9. Whereas if it's 6.9, you might have thought it was a 7 if you were only looking at the green color. Place a probe in the solution to be tested. Record the pH in your data table. Before, so you gotta do these three again. Okay. And then when we're done, we put it in here. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Turn it on. Okay, so yes, absolutely. So the solution to be tested are these little beakers, okay? And you can see that the part of the pH probe that works is this little bulb at the bottom, okay? So you don't need too much liquid. So we have 50 milliliters in each of those parts and that's perfectly fine. The important thing is to remember when you take it out, wash it in wash one, then wash it in wash two, okay? That means okay. it's gonna dilute whatever you have. All right. Okay. So this is sodium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. What's the number? 
so good. It's at 11. So mostly 11. 11.3. This is a oh, will it say? 11.50. So 11. Okay. Sodium hydroxide 0 0.02. Okay. Ladies and gents, it's important before you leave the classroom that you have the following things done. If you were doing a lab, make sure that you have left it in a safe condition. So the people who are cleaning up the station, thank you very much, I appreciate it, it's fine. Just neutralize it and I'll come clean up that spill in a little while. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Nobody is going to leave the room unless we have all the special calculators back inside the calculator box. Nicole, can you show everyone where the calculator box is? ta -da! Okay, we need wobbly thumbs books going back on the front desk. Okay, stack them in your stack. Um, okay, Shauna, could you please take charge of making sure that you collect everybody's bags with the yellow cards? Thank you. Zaina, could you take charge of collecting the traffic light cards? There's just one per group. Does anybody have any burning questions for me now? Okay, next class, when we come, go exactly back to where you were and pick up where you left off. Okay, please do the reading before I see you again. Okay, so today I started the lesson by checking on some background knowledge. In chemistry, it's really important for students to review the topics. The more you review and you elicit the prior knowledge, you're building on a solid foundation. When I first started teaching, I used to think it was important that we run the whole lesson from start to finish in the one block, you know, and then you know, check, done that. And as I become more experienced, I found that it's so much more effective if, even though you plan to run the whole lesson in one day, you need to start off by going back and recapping what we did last class. Okay, so behind me you can see a joke board. And this is something that is brand new this year. Students came in and they were telling each other some, some jokes. And one student said, you know, you could imagine that there was a blank whiteboard at the back of the room ready for the day's engage. And a student said, Mrs. Austin, I've got a great joke. Can I write it on the board? Because you know, students, give them a whiteboard, give them markers, they are so happy. I said, sure, go ahead. And that totally snowballed. And in fact, the class that you saw today they were the class who started this. So now, when I get work for grading or when I get work for essays, oftentimes students will throw in little chemistry jokes because they have this theory that happy teachers give good grades. Yeah, so one of my favorite jokes at the moment is, I'm looking up at the board, is never trust an atom. They make up everything. So students have a great sense of humor in the classroom and Honestly, it just shows you the level of engagement that happens in this room. Students will come in here and they will erase a joke and put a new joke up. And the new motto in Duval County, in a nutshell, is every student, every day. And this board is indicative of the fact that in this classroom, we're talking about engagement. And every student is engaged every day.